Welcome back to my conversation with Shia Hever. Shia Hever is based in Heidelberg, Germany, and we're having a conversation about the demonstrations that are taking place between the Gaza and Israeli border over the last several weeks. Now, some people call Gaza the largest open-air prison in the world, and the measures that uh, the Israeli military is taking to crush the protests in Gaza um, is making things worse. And their tactics are diverse, ranging from sniper fire on demonstrators to using drones to t uh, distribute high concentration of tear gas, and also um, in terms of uh, distributing messages, you know, propaganda uh, to the Arabic social media. It's calling on women to stay home, calling, uh, I guess, enticing fear uh, among the demonstrators so that they don't come to the demonstrations. What uh, are the actual strategies which Israeli government is engaged in here uh, uh, to defeat the demonstrators? Israel has a lot of tactics and a lot of technologies, but actually they don't have a strategy. They don't have a long-term strategy. They're just trying to buy time. Uh, the, the last uh, uh, item on the list that you mentioned was a statement by Erdei, uh, an, an Israeli general who writes on, on Arabic social media, saying, uh, quoting uh, the Prophet Muhammad to try to convince women to stay at home and care for their families and not to protest, uh, shows the level of hypocrisy and also the level of desperation of the Israeli um, forces in, in using every dirty trick in the book trying to get the Palestinians to stop resisting, and they're not succeeding. Uh, so the only strategy that the Israeli government really has um, is, is to, con to keep the struggle violent. And because of this, uh, the Israeli Air Force bombed some targets within Gaza. They bombed Hamas installations, uh, trying to kill people and destroy property in order to provoke a reaction from the Hamas party. And they were hoping that then Hamas members will throw rockets on Israel and then the Israeli government could say, well, we're just defending ourselves and increase the, the fire and the, the demonstrators will be killed in the crossfire and the Israeli government will be able to spin this as just a military conflict. Interestingly, Hamas is not falling for this bait and they're not responding with rocket fire despite Israeli bombings. I think Hamas knows that if they do this, the demonstrators will never forgive them. The demonstrators demand the chance to prove that a nonviolent struggle can succeed. Uh, and that kind, and that undermines the only kind of move that the Israeli government uh, uh, knows, trying to to escalate the violence. Uh, and if they cannot do that, then we're seeing their whole strategy uh, collapsing. And so, so that's that's my point. They don't have a long-term strategy, and eventually, uh, Palestinians will be able uh, to to gain their freedom when when the Israelis realize there's nothing they can do to stop them. Right. Now, um, the International Criminal Court here in The Hague has issued a statement that it is watching closely what is happening in Gaza and may press charges against Israeli soldiers and officers who open fire on defenseless Palestinians. Is this likely to happen uh, given that Israel has been very successful in squashing any citations against them at the United Nations. I'm sure ICC is no different. Um, what's your take on that? Um, it is unlikely to happen because indeed uh, uh, the Israeli government will use everything in their power to prevent such a, a court case and the United States is going to help Israel in that uh, as, as much as they can. Uh, but uh, we should never forget that the Palestinians actually signed the Rome uh, Convention. So now uh, the ICC has jurisdiction over uh, crimes committed within the area occupied by Israel. So that includes Gaza. Uh, and that's very important. Th this means that theoretically it is possible to press charges against individual soldiers or officers who participate in the killing of, of civilians. Uh, and that's something that, even if it doesn't actually happen right away, even if it doesn't immediately uh, um, happen that, that hundreds of Israeli soldiers are arrested, uh, it's enough that Israeli soldiers think about it. It's enough that they realize that this possibility exists, that these very young soldiers, 18 or 20 years old, uh, who some of them, unfortunately, they think it's fun 
to, to open fire on, on uh, defenseless civilians. Uh, there was just a, a video that was now uh, released that Israeli soldiers took uh, a few months ago where they uh, murder a Palestinian with a sniper rifle and then they cheer and, and uh, praise the, the sniper for, for killing the Palestinian. And they put this video online because they're not afraid, because they don't fear the consequences. But statements like those of the ICC do make some Israeli soldiers think about the consequences, that maybe when they're a bit older uh, and uh, they want to go to Europe uh, on a trip, uh, what happens if somebody arrests them? What happens if uh, somebody presses charges against them? And in fact, there's the, an Israeli human rights organization called B'Tselem, and they issued a very rare statement that we usually don't see from them, calling on Israeli soldiers to refuse the order to open fire on unarmed civilians. And they're calling on Israeli soldiers to refuse. This is uh, uh, unusual. And of course, the response within the Israeli government, within the Israeli army, is vehement and vicious. And they're calling B'Tselem traitors. And they want to close down B'Tselem uh, for making the statement. But B'Tselem is actually protecting Israeli soldiers. Because uh, if these soldiers will, will take heed and listen to what B'Tselem is saying, uh, then they will realize that they're taking some legal risk by opening fire on Palestinians. They could find themselves one day facing charges for war crimes. And I think that's the point, that for Israeli soldiers uh, and for Israelis in general, it's so easy to forget that Palestinians are human beings. They're, you're taught that it's the enemy and that you can just shoot them with no consequences. So the international community, people supporting the boycott divestment sanctions movement, the ICC and any any other kind of, of organization, international organization that tries to make Israel accountable for their crimes committed against Palestinians is doing so by reminding Israelis that Palestinians are human beings. All right, Shir, I thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Sharmini. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.